there are many paths to nourishing yourself from the energies you're consuming, for example, food, music, and affirmation, to the activities that become an important part of your day-to-day -day practice. In today's vlog, I'll be sharing my own unique practices that nourish not only my body and mind, but also my inner child. As many of you guys know, tea, coffee, and honey are essentials for me, and milk oolong tea, especially lately, has been my tea of choice. Now, when it comes to my routine, typically I intuitively plan out each day of the week and make room for routines that support my business, but also my mental and emotional health along with my spiritual practices. Homesteading, including chicken care and gardening, were a few of the activities I had added to my vision board and began more seriously manifesting, I think about three years ago. And today, the care of my animals and garden is what honestly keeps my heart and soul happy and my energy open and thriving. Without these routines, caring for my feathered friends and my fur babies, I know I would instantly feel less grounded and connected to Earth, who not only is the main ruler of my natal chart, but also a big part of my spiritual practice. It's the stabilizing anchor of every single piece of my life. Now, you know I can't talk about my daily rituals and my daily routines without bringing up astrology. For most of you guys, I'm pretty sure you know at this point that astrology, tarot, esoteric symbolism, and spirituality is a huge part of my being here. So, of course, naturally, I have to kind of bring some education here and inspiration and pass that all along to you now. Now, while I'm diving into some easy astro wisdom, I'm going to keep you guys along with me as I feed snacks, in this case, oatmeal and whole grain bread to my chickens. So feel free to hang out. They're definitely funny to watch. This is a vlog, but it can also be a great opportunity to pull your own chart for a moment and grab some inspo for yourself as we move along. If you want to just vibe though, or you simply just love a little chicken ASMR, then of course there's that option. If you wish it to be, clearly there's no pressure. The world is your oyster today, tomorrow, and the day after that. I personally am a natural teacher at heart and I just love to sprinkle a learning moment like glitter wherever I go. Now let's go ahead and dive quickly in. So your routine is ruled by the sixth house in your astrology chart. And the opposite of the sixth house is, yep, you guessed it, the 12th. So going a little deeper, the six is naturally ruled by the energy of Virgo and the 12th, her opposite, Pisces. Now, Virgo energy loves a routine. She loves wholeness, health, and hygiene. Now, Pisces, on the other hand, swims in the oceanic realms of the subconscious and magic. So when our day-to-day -day activities include wholesome and healthy practices, it supports and magnetizes our subconscious minds and also strengthens our intuitive gifts even more so if you're psychically or spiritually sensitive. On the flip side, our intuitive selves receive guidance and wisdom if we're open to it and inspire us to incorporate the practices that will best nourish us through every cycle and season of our lives. These two energies align in perfect harmony, a divinely arranged marriage. So. I'm curious to know what naturally rules your sixth house and what rules your 12th and what practices you've already started to incorporate into your routine or what practices you're naturally drawn to in your day-to-day -day routine and if they are things that are supporting you, nourishing you, and keeping you grounded. Now speaking of tiny things that bring me joy, Franklin. Franklin is another thing that brings me tremendous joy. It's kind of rare to see him hanging out by the chicken coop. This is usually Nova's stomping ground. So I don't know if you noticed the chickens were a little spooked by him being there, but where there's a camera, you'll find a Franklin. Typical Leo. Now, speaking of inner child wisdom, nourishment, and growth, homegirl, my silky chicken, has decided that she is ready to become a mother. 
Now, just like us, chickens have natural instincts that kick in when the timing is just right. As with all things organic and natural, we can't rush the process, but when it's time, you'll know. Now, she's been resting in the little nest that she's built, completely oblivious to the other hens laying around her. Homegirl is honoring her hermetic stage within her life, disconnecting from the outside world, including her family and friends, to do what she is intuitively called to do. And I think that that's a message that many of you hens and roosters can also relate to. I left her a little bowl of water to keep her hydrated in the meantime. And once again, my Leo baby, Franklin. Now let's take a tiny break and see what gifts the other hens have left us. Now today, particularly, I think because I'm recording, I don't know what got into Penelope and Genevieve, but they decided to kick their eggs into their poop. So a little humbling process that is good for the soul. I had to put my hand in there and kind of rinse these eggs off. Usually I make these eggs for my babies, Nova and Franklin, but overall the quality of the eggs is superior. And that's one of the great gifts of homesteading in general that I love. The more I give to it, the more it gives back to me. And that again is another message. Spending time at my altar is important and also so is spending time with my family. My baby cousin, Elijah, just got his driver's license and later on today, I'm gonna to be taking him for a practice drive. Random, but these chia seeds are amazing for breakfast. Now, the same cup of water that I was just pouring is also the water that I'm going to add at my altar. This helps with spiritual communication. These eggs are from the chickens and I add them as offerings to my altar, to my ancestors and my guides for helping me out and also keeping the energy of fertility and abundance growing. Now you guys know I love tarot. It's no coincidence that we have this beautiful card here, the Fool card, which is about innocence, new beginnings, and planting seeds of intention. I love also here the Eight of Wands, the card of the messenger. This is a message that will be coming to you shortly, very, very shortly, super quick. Now this candle in the background is one of my Nectar of Life candles. This fixed candle has been taking me forever to burn, but it is specifically carrying intentions for my own well-being. And of course, naturally, I share my magic with you guys. You can find that in the apothecary at bahadilife.com. This oil particularly is from the Libra Full Moon. Ugh, absolutely magical. It gives me such great joy and pleasure to share my magic with others. It's helpful for me and it's also helpful for you. Now, remember how I said I was gonna take my cousin Elijah for driving practice? Well, we went to the beach and while we were there, we happened to find this book exchange thing, which is pretty awesome. It had this book in there, but more importantly, this book, The Stranger <gasps> in the Woods, The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit. I found this so I take it? stunning I because I have personally been in a hermetic stage within my life and earlier homegirl my silky chicken was also in that stage so I'm wondering if one of you guys can relate. Now let's go a little further onto the beach another place where I love to put my feet in the sand connect with the ocean waters and allow myself to reground pray set intention and recuperate. Another practice that nourishes me is cooking or just food prep in general. I love fresh, whole foods, and you guys know I'm sharing a recipe for the meals I'm vibing with every other day on my Instagram. Now today, I was connecting with the energy of kale, so naturally, I made a kale salad with a homemade dressing. I'll share the recipe with you now. First, you'll need kale. I used pre-washed and already cut up kale because personally, I'm not a big fan of chopping up kale. Sometimes it hurts. I don't know why, I'm just sensitive like that. Then we're gonna add some dried cranberries. Craisins is one of my favorite brands. I just feel like it's so ripe and so juicy. We're just gonna sprinkle it right there on top in a to-go container to make it easier for us and also to not waste um, dishes or dirty up dishes because I'm gonna be using this to transport and also to, um, protect and preserve the salad afterwards. 
Then I'm going to add these sunflower seeds, which actually, believe it or not, was a gift from my aunt Denise, and I still have them in my cabinet. Such a sweet gift, if I might add. Also, this honey is from one of my boyfriend's friends, Bee Farm. Wow, shout out to them. I'm going to link them down below. But uh, also, goals. <laughs> one day, I want to also have a little bumblebee sanctuary on my property, but fingers crossed, one step at a time, we'll get there when it's time. Then I'm going to be using black truffle oil. So guys, don't get mad at me, but I don't have measurements here. I typically just eyeball it. I think I have about two teaspoons of pure honey and a douse of truffle oil. I was maybe thinking one day of making a cookbook and there I'll have more measurements, like precise measurements, but for now I eyeball it and then taste as I go along. The next thing I'm going to be adding is salt with truffle. So clearly there's a theme here. I don't know if you guys have ever tried truffle, but I highly recommend it. I haven't actually looked into the significance of truffle in general for me. So please feel free to leave it down below in the comments. But my spirit, my energy loves truffle. Not only is the taste really bold and obvious, but it feels really good in my body, like my body very much vibes with it. The next thing that I'm gonna be adding is this yummy delicious lemon. That is another fruit that I have been completely obsessed with. I'm sure if you're following me again on my personal Instagram, you've seen that lemons have been incorporated in almost every single meal. From salad dressings to lemonade to marinades all of those things lemons have been it for me and i would be more than happy to share a lemonade recipe with you guys that i personally feel that i have mastered and also if it's any um testament the members of my community also love my lemonade including my family and my friends so mm, there's that this citrus juicer was i think five dollars or three dollars from target and i'm going to be using it today but sometimes i like to juice like actually juice lemons in my fruit juicer but because i'm only needing like one lemon today i was going to work with the juicer and basically you just want to grind the lemon after you've rolled it and activated the juices within oh my god it smells so good by the way um, you just kind of turn it around, juice as much as you can, and then toss the lemon rinds into, um, what's it called, uh, your compost, or, I don't know, uh, give it to you as a fun trick to your pets, which I've done in the past. Okay, then we're going to need to strain said lemon juice and get those rinds out. After that, we're going to add some yummy, delicious Dijon mustard. Shout out to my father who gave me his hands. <laughs> we have the same hands. As I look at his hands, I see my dad. It's so interesting. Go ahead and mix up this concoction, taking your time with it. I say take your time because I realized how aggressive I was with stirring my salad dressing. I am like that with all marinades. I don't know taste test to make sure that it tastes good and clearly it do it's hitting the way it should be hitting i love this dressing then we're gonna go ahead and add all of those ingredients into again your to-go bin i typically like to have glass containers but today i'm working with plastic and i can't wait clearly obviously to share it with my partner i'm so excited oh one last thing guys this salad dressing this salad dressing right here fire you can get it at Walmart, I think, but let's say your salad dressing fails, which this is a trial and error for me always. But if this, if your homemade salad dressing doesn't hit, again with the aggressive stirring, um, then you can always resort to this salad dressing right here, which will do it to you good every single time. Clearly, clearly, Franklin is sick of me. <laughs> I always look up and see him judging. It's hilarious. <laughs> now, another thing that brings me joy and pleasure is my boyfriend. 
I love to share what I've made, what I've cooked with Iron. him. He's also in the restaurant restaurant industry, so he knows good food good when he sees it. Also, he can be tough to please, wow. but today he loved my salad. It's tasty. That's enough. <laughs> Wow. So don't mind him. He's an Aquarius. <laughs> if you know, you know. One of the last things that truly nourishes me is creation. Magic and intention are once again my everythings, and it's always an honor to either A, pull charts or cards for others, or B, merge all the things that I love the most at one of my favorite places in the world, my altar, overlooking the chickens and garden. Now those are my unique practices that nourish me. I'm curious, what are yours? I'll meet you guys in the comments and also I loved hanging out with you today and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.